When you talk about Shiva, there is no parentage, there is no place of birth. It's very common to refer to Shiva as Yaksha Swarupa. Yakshas means always those kind of beings which are not human. So, all the enlightened people who've been... How many did you meet? Like, I've heard about <laughs> many. Like, you know, say Krishna or Muhammad or, um, or Ram or Christ, Buddha, you know, all the enlightened people who've been on this planet, there is some sort of mention of their birth or death. But when it comes to Shiva, uh, like you say, he, and I've read that he was self-created. And, um, and I often ask you this question, that, um, that did he like, disappear into thin air and apparently something like that happened. Uh, he couldn't even have biological children with any of the women he was married to. Uh, also, he, uh, he... At least you can't blame him for the population. <laughs> Sadhguru, I'm coming to something very important. There is a theory. I thought population was very important no, no, no. too. There is a theory that Shiva is alien. My favorite director, Christopher Nolan, made this film, Interstellar, which is one of my favorite films, where they are constantly referring to certain beings as they. They are communicating, they are talking to us, they are doing this, but they never really clarified who they were. Like, were they aliens, were they gods, who they were? And, uh, and, and Sadhguru, like, this, this, I think I felt it in, like, when, when any creative idea comes to me, it has absolutely no intellectual grounds where I can go back and track it down. It's literally like a male dropped in my head. This it seems like it's from this, an outside this space. This is not a confession. <laughs> I know it's a confession, but, but, but Sadhguru, is it that we are being operated by an external, like sort of outside beings? Is, is it that? Well, uh, people who have no faith in human intelligence are looking up that intelligence will come from somewhere else. <laughs> what we need to understand is, see, there are certain things which are very significant things in this country which unfortunately this present generation has completely forgotten or very few people are reminded and the rest of the world, some places they recognize, rest of the places it's not there. What the thing is just this, here we consider things like this. For example, in yoga, we call your spine the center of the universe, we call it Merudhanda, that means it's the axis of the universe. What is a universe? Please understand this. Today scientists are admitting it is an endless universe. Forever we've been saying it's an ever-expanding universe. So we said your spine is the axis of the universe. That sounds ridiculous. Even without putting any load, most people's backs are hurting badly. <laughs> they can't even <laughs> walk or run or do anything. If this becomes the axis of the universe, what will happen? Why we are saying this is, see, you know there is a universe or you think there is a universe only by your experience, isn't it so? If you did not experience, if you did not… if you could not see this, if you could not see like this and feel like this, you wouldn't know there is a universe. Only because of your experience, there is a universe. And the center where your experience is being transmitted is through your spine. If we cut a few wires in your spine, you will have no experience even of the body, forget about the universe. So because your… your ability to experience the universe is rooted and centered in your spine, we are calling your… your spine as the axis of the universe. Suppose this hall, see now we know the boundaries of this hall. Now we can debate whether this is the center of this hall or that is the center of this hall. Suppose there are no boundaries to this hall. How would you decide which is the center of this hall? Where you are is the center of the hall, isn't it? From this basis, we developed a whole possibility for a human being, how not just to believe these things but to make it into your living experience. It is from this the word yoga came, that the inclusiveness happens not because I tell you, oh, I love you, you love me and all this stuff. Inclusiveness happens simply because you obliterate the boundaries of your individuality. Not because I love you, you love me, I hug you, you hug me, so because we are inclusive, no. All that will last for some time, tomorrow if they do something that you don't like, it'll be finished. But you obliterate the boundaries of your individual nature, including your body, that you know how to sit here without being identified with the boundaries of who you are. 
Your physical structure, your mental structure, your emotional structure has a boundary. It may be large or small. No, I'm not talking about the body being large. It may be large or small, but it has a boundary. But there are dimensions which have no boundary. What doesn't have a boundary is non-physical in nature. So our focus has always been on that dimension which is non-physical. That is why Shiva became the most important thing because Shiva means that which is not, that which is non-physical. Now is he the, the yogi that we are talking about? Is he a, a human being? Is he… did he come from somewhere else? See, there are things. As you said, there is no parentage. When you talk about Shiva, there is no parentage, there is no place of birth. There nobody saw him as a young boy to grow up. All the time when we saw him, he was about the same age. And we don't know where he died, such a significant human being, even in those times, if he died somewhere, there must have… they should have built a temple, they should have built a, some kind of a monument for him, nothing like that happened. So there is no birth, there is no death, there is no parentage, there is no siblings, there is no anything to prove that he was here. Does it mean to say we can assume he came from somewhere? Not necessarily, but in many of the… if you look at the lore, it's very common to refer to Shiva as Yaksha Swarupa. This means… Yakshas means always those… those kind of beings which are not human, but who supposed to have existed in the natural env environment in this planet, in the forest and other things. Whatever we were referring to, some kind of beings or creatures or whatever you want to call them, who are not human in nature. So many, many times in the lore, you will see any number of songs and other things talking about Shiva as a Yaksha Swarupa. So there are many things which point, but there is no specific proof that he came from elsewhere.